Has Missouri football made progress this season? And what should it do in the second half of this campaign? Plus, after a big win over Bama, well, now Missouri fans hilariously pining for Josh Heupel. So let's talk about that and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And of course, thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Of course, your link's available at LockedOnMizzou.com. Thanks for sending a fellow true son or daughter that direction. But I tell you what, I, I teased this on my last program, and I didn't quite get to it. So apologies to me for poor podcasting there. But I teased the idea of asking the question, is this progress for Missouri? We're two and a half years into the Eli Drinkwitz era, so where are the Tigers, quite simply? Where is this program? Well, frankly, I think this team, the 2022 Tigers, are actually better than last year's squad. So while obviously losing three games in a row there in close fashion in the SEC, that's nobody's idea of, yay, we did it, I do think there's some progress there against some really traditionally great programs, a couple of them on the road, and of course, Georgia at home. Missouri is maybe not as far off as it looks. So while clearly this is not the rapid improvement that Missouri fans would like to see, I do think it's there. I do think there's some improvement this season. Now, of course, there are some concerns too. Certainly, it's not all rosy, and you got to start Here, with the quarterback position, the quarterback of the future, certainly so far two and a half years into Drinkwitz era, we haven't figured it out yet. Now listen, maybe it's Sam Horn. Maybe he truly is going to be the answer in the future, but it certainly isn't him yet. And here's the thing, while none of us, including myself, have seen Sam Horn in these closed practices, there is a little thing called people talk right? It's called the rumor mill. And if you've lived around Columbia, Missouri for as long as I have in Boone County in general, well, things tend to be, things tend to get out. People tend to talk. And I think if Sam Horn were clearly the better quarterback right now over Brady Cook, I think we'd be getting some indication of that. So far, that's not the indication we're getting. And even if you listen to Eli Drinkwitz himself, he'll sort of hint that we want we aren't just going to throw Sam Horn out there just because he's an option. He's got to earn. He's got to earn it. He needs a full grasp of the offense and the playbook and all that stuff. That's all been hinted at by Drinkwitz here the last few days. So I just think that frankly Horn isn't ready yet. And also, I think even Brady Cook's biggest supporters would concede that he hasn't locked up the job for the future either. Brady has, I believe, as many as two more years of eligibility left. But while Cook may be the starter again next year, again, it's going to be a competition next year. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So while I've certainly said that Cook should remain the starter for at least the Vanderbilt game, once again, I have to concede that there's no way you can just give him the job for 2023. I don't think, again, I don't even think his biggest fans outside of maybe his immediate family would say that. Now, on the plus side, There have been some stars that have emerged for Missouri among Eli Drinkwitz's vaunted recruiting class. Certainly Dominic Lovett is your leader there. He's been an excellent, excellent player so far. And not only that, a really impressive young man too, a a red shirt, or excuse me, a true sophomore guy. This is just his second year in college. He just seems to be just always preaching positivity, at least publicly, right? And I really think that rubs off on the rest of his teammates, especially in the wide receiver room. 
I think it certainly picked up Luther Burden after he maybe had maybe was a little bit frustrated I think after week four or five at a certain point I think Dominic Lovett is the type of leader that picks up everybody around him including by the way true freshman Makai Miller who had an excellent excellent game against Florida a couple big third down conversions in that ball game Dominic Lovett said on Miller remember that name so yes possibly another great Miller associated with the University of Missouri. You got to love that. But again, love it has been great. Obviously, I think Dalen Carnell has emerged as a very good player. You know, hasn't played massive amounts of snaps, but when he's been out there, he's been really impressive. I think Ennis Rakestraw is having a really nice season, especially when you consider he's coming off that ACL injury. But frankly, overall, other than probably those three guys for the most part, I'd like to have seen a little bit more of the Drinkwitz youth, the his members of those vaunted recruiting classes start to actually percolate up the two deep a little bit more. And, and frankly, just certain guys, you know, at the running back position, the tight end position, various different spots where Missouri could maybe use some help, especially that tight end position. Well, nobody's really emerged yet. You know, they went to the transfer portal, got Tyler Stevens, who obviously had a really nice moment, nice touchdown catch against Georgia, but for the most part has been quiet in the passing game. And, you know, Ryan Horstcamp, Gavin McKay, none of these guys have really emerged yet. So that's a bit of a concern. And and by the way, this goes without saying, although I, I div, I'm giving Missouri some moderate credit here for being moderately better this season than they were in 2021, well, you can just throw everything I've said in this segment about Missouri actually improving this season if the Tigers lose to Vanderbilt on homecoming this coming Saturday because, seriously, it's all null and void. If you lose to Vanderbilt, ooh, that's rough. And I realize the Commodores are probably a little bit better this season than they've been, but after a 56 nothing drubbing by Georgia this past weekend, Missouri just absolutely, absolutely has to win that football game or – Really, anything's on the table at that point. Then I think, yeah, you probably do just throw Sam Horn out there regardless if he's ready or not, and just to see just to see what you've got because the season's essentially over if that happens. Not saying I'm that worried about it at this point, but anything is, of course, possible. It is college football. So halfway through the season, I think we have a pretty darn good idea of what Missouri is good at what they're bad at, but of course you can still make some slight adjustments that I think will give the Tigers a better chance to win moving forward. So let's talk about what they should do offensively and yes, defensively as well. But speaking of defense, you know what? Sometimes you gotta protect the house. And I mean that literally in this case. So that's why we at the Locked On Podcast Network love Simply Safe because in the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their house. And I'm one of them. I can tell you from personal experience, this is a great company. Everything is just so easy to set up. It's customizable to fit exactly your security needs to your house or your, your small business, your, your office, whatever it might be. Simply Safe has you covered and you can once again customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There you'll save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month of monitoring for free. So visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. Because there's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, so what should Missouri do in this back half of the season to actually be a little bit better? Well, defensively, obviously, for the most part, you want to stay the course with one small adjustment, in my opinion, because the scheme wise, there's not much I can really complain about. Obviously, Missouri's been really productive defensively and by the way in particular Missouri is seventh nationally in third down conversion percentage defensively giving up a first down on third down just 27.4 percent of the time but 
to my eyes, they've given up some really important conversions that could have been game-changing plays on at least a couple different quarterback scrambles. And again, I've said this before if you've listened to my show recently, but it's worth repeating. Missouri's just got to play less man-to-man coverage in that situation. And frankly, if you are going to play some kind of man, well, you need to bring some pressure to the strong side, especially on a guy like Anthony Richardson, blitz a guy like the aforementioned Dalen Carnell or Martez Manuel from their star positions and try at least to make him run the opposite way away from his strong hand. And those guys can probably chase him down before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Or at the very least, put a spy on one of those guys if you are going to play man. But to me, just zone coverage in a situation where you're facing a scrambling quarterback that is not that good of a passer. Somebody like Adrian Martinez or somebody like Anthony Richardson. Yes, I'm sorry, Kansas State fans. I'm just not that scared of Adrian Martinez as a passer. I'm not saying that means he's a terrible college quarterback, but anyway, enough with you Wildcat fans. You're not actually listening. Let's be real. But other than that, I think obviously the Missouri defense has done a great job. Blake Baker's done a great job. That would be the small adjustment I would make against certain opponents for sure. But offensively, well, obviously there's a lot more to be desired on that side of the football. And again, assuming you beat Vanderbilt, I think you probably just stay the course at quarterback the rest of the season with Brady Cook. Now, again, I can change my mind in a couple weeks, and and certainly, once again, you lose to Vanderbilt, well, just blow the whole thing up. But other than quarterback, let's keep the tight ends somewhat involved in the passing game. They just cannot be a total afterthought. And by the way, the this is something that Drinkwitz has implemented here the past two or three weeks or so. The, the old play-action fake and then just dump it to the tight end in the flat. That play, I mean, you want to talk about something that is as tried and true as any play in the history of American football. Hey, you want five yards? Well, there you go. There it is. So to me, again, just make it easy for the tight ends. They don't have to be you know, Travis Kelsey, they just need to not be glorified offensive linemen out there. Just keep him involved a little bit, and I think the offense will be will be a lot better for it. And frankly, still more on the tight ends, I'd probably go with more one tight end sets as opposed to a lot of two tight end sets that Drinkwitz often seems to prefer. Also, I also think that 10 personnel, I've said it before, I'll say it once more, I think no tight ends on the field with one running back and four receivers can really fit what Missouri does well. You get Mookie Cooper out there a little bit more. I think he needs to be involved. I think he's a guy who's potentially a big playmaker out there from that slot position along with Lovett. Lovett's going to take the attention, right? If you have an actual slot corner on your team, well, guess what? He's probably going to be on Dominic Lovett. That means Mookie Cooper is going to have a lot of opportunities if you put them out there together to work against a safety, possibly even a linebacker. And speed-wise, that's going to be a really tough matchup for anybody in the country at those positions. Also, I'd like to see more of Makai Miller, too. Again, Dominic Lovett said, remember that name? Well, I'm saying remember that name, too. And by the way, something I noticed on those Makai Miller plays and just something I've noticed generally over the last couple years with Brady Cook he seems really comfortable throwing those flag routes or yeah just the sort of deep out eh, I'm not I'm not describing this well excuse me they're all called flag routes I'm, I'm sort of forgetting the other name for those routes but it's sort of like the opposite of a post instead of breaking You run 10 yards downfield, instead of breaking inside at a 45-degree angle, you're going to break outside toward the sidelines, and it really seems like Brady is comfortable with those. He hit Miller on at least one of those, and we've seen Brady hit several of those in his career. Let's see some more of those type concepts, a smash type concept, if you will. Let's see some of that, since Cook seems to be very comfortable with it. And in terms of, by the way, the running game, for the love of God, maybe this isn't the year to be running a lot of outside zone. Missouri has to stop losing so many yardage, so much yards, especially 
on the ground, especially on first down, because it's absolutely killing their offense. It's killing drive after drive. We know that Missouri has a tough time sustaining drives this season if they don't get big plays, and and this is a huge reason why. So to me, less of the outside zone, maybe it's just simple as run more inside zone, or maybe actually let these linemen do a little bit more man blocking, run some just dive play stuff, some power stuff where you bring the weak side guard around to the strong side, just anything but the outside zone. I think we've seen it enough to know that while sometimes, yeah, Pete will break one for 20 yards, it's just too much lose five or six. I'm tired of that. And frankly, somehow, some way, Eli Drankwitz has to make Brady Cook's life a little bit easier. Everything just seems, just in terms of the plays that are being run outside of, you know, just quick little passes to the outside on screen plays, everything's just too hard. Listen, Drinkwitz designed a great play to get Tyler Stevens wide open for Missouri's one offensive touchdown against Georgia. Well, frankly, we just need to see more of that. You see Lincoln Riley every week, the former Oklahoma coach now at USC, guys just running wide open 15 or 20 times a game, it seems like. Ryan Day at Ohio State, same deal. And yes, those two, those two teams obviously have great talent and more talent than what Missouri has, but that's great design. When you're getting your guys that wide open, that's called the coach winning. And while Ohio State and USC certainly, they have guys who can win one-on-one battles, too much of Drinkwitz often seems predicated on his guys winning one-on-one battles. Again, as the coach, you've got to win occasionally, and that's something I want to see more just in general out of Drinkwitz the second half of the season. And speaking of head coaches who call their own plays, well, Josh Heupel, former Missouri offensive coordinator, big-time win for Tennessee. They remain undefeated. Vols took down Bama in quite a thriller. And, of course, well, now some Missouri fans coming out of the woodwork saying, dang it, we should have hired Josh Heupel as our head coach, which I find hilarious for at least a couple reasons. But you know what? First, I do want to tell you that Missouri is a 14-and-a-half-point favorite right now over Vanderbilt, over at betonline.net. But even more importantly, the total, 54 and a half. Yes, once again, I think we're going to be going under on that one, ladies and gentlemen. They're just not really adjusting. Do they not believe in this Missouri defense? I don't know. Vanderbilt just got shut out last week. I think I'm going under 54 and a half. Spoiler alert for the rest of the week here on Locked on Mizzou. But I'll tell you what, no matter what you're into, over at betonline.net, it could be college football, pro football, basketball's a coming, of course, soccer, World Cup's coming, clubs, the club action's already underway. But again, no matter what you're into, you got to check it out over at betonline.net, where the game starts. Now, obviously, Josh Heupel, the former Missouri offensive coordinator in 2016 and 2017, is having a great season down in Knoxville, to say the least. But this has caused some rather wild revisionist history, in my opinion, where some fans have just now come to the conclusion that, oh, Missouri should have hired him as their head coach, which frankly makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because number one, just timing wise, it never made any sense for Missouri to actually hire Heupel as its head coach. Now to hire him as the offensive coordinator, well, that did make sense. And frankly, Barry Odom deserves a lot of credit for hiring, for finding a guy who obviously did a nice job for him for a couple seasons. But the idea that, okay, when, when Missouri, should have Missouri have hired Heupel? Should they have hired him instead of, of Barry Odom? Is that what people are saying? Because that would be crazy. Because previously, Josh Heupel was basically the quarterback's coach at Oklahoma for about eight seasons. He had one season as Utah State's offensive coordinator in 2015, and that alone was going to be good enough for Missouri to hire him as their head coach. 
if forget about the name, forget about you know about Heupel now. If Missouri would have hired after Gary Pinkle, they would have hired Utah State's offensive coordinator. People would have lost their freaking minds. All right. So let's just take that one off the table. And then, by the way, okay, Missouri, obviously, Heupel leaves, goes and coaches Central Florida when Scott Frost leaves that program. To, to go back to Nebraska, well, he's the head coach at UCF. Like, yeah, he had to take that job, by the way. Josh Heupel's been an offensive coordinator, a full, like not co, by the way, a full-time offensive coordinator for three seasons. He's now getting a pretty big-time job as a head coach at UCF. Yeah, he had to take that job. And so he was still hired. You could argue, I guess, oh my God, Missouri should have thrown the bank at Josh Heupel and tried to get him there. But I just don't think that's realistic. I really don't. Heupel was through after two seasons at UCF, one where actually his second season record-wise was a little bit worse than his first. You could argue, oh, he's done it with Scott Frost players. By the way, he trended down that third year in 2020 as well. But that didn't stop Tennessee from taking a chance on him. It paid off for them so far. But again, I don't think when they hired Heupel back then, anybody was going, well, this is definitely going to work out. This is a surefire bet that Heupel in year two is going to have the Vols undefeated in beating Alabama. I don't think anybody was saying that. And frankly, while I think Heupel has done a nice job with this, designing this offense, learning some stuff that he probably did wrong at Missouri, in my opinion, well, he is still going to have to prove that he can do it with his own players. He's still going to have to prove that he can recruit. He hasn't totally shown that yet, by the way. He's doing this right now with Jeremy Pruitt's players and obviously some people from the transfer portal as well. But at a certain point, you've still got to prove that you can recruit the high school ranks and keep loading it up year after year after year and actually develop players. Maybe Hypel will be able to do it, but again, I just find it, number one, this is funny because, frankly, the timing was just never realistic that Missouri was going to hire Josh Heupel. But also, as I just alluded to, there were some things that Heupel has learned after his time at Missouri. I think the Georgia game in 2016 where Missouri had a lead, but the hurry-up offense just kept snapping the ball with 20, 25 seconds left on the play clock instead of actually bleeding that clock a little bit more. Well, I think those little subtle adjustments are something that Heupel has learned for sure. But my point is, when he did this stuff, when Missouri started off its 2016 campaign with, I believe, a couple three-and-out punts that lasted, the time of possession was about 25 total seconds, people were losing their mind. People were not like, oh, Josh Heupel, he's the greatest. A lot of people just thought, well, this guy's probably too smart for his own good. And frankly, like literally, and I do mean literally, every Missouri offensive coordinator since I've been a fan, well, Missouri fans always complain about them. Whether it's Dave Yost, whether it's Josh Henson, whether you go all the way back to the Larry Smith era, whether it's Jerry Byrne, whoever it might be, it's always it's always the offensive coordinator's fault. And Eli Drinkwitz is seeing this a little bit too. So just this idea that, oh my God, Missouri messed up by not hiring Josh Heupel, my question would be based on what? So with all that being said, I'll see you all next time right here on Locked on Mizzou. If you need some more Southeastern Conference football, we got to check out Chris Gordy with Locked on SEC. Make him your second listen today. And thanks, as always, for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen. I'm John Miller, and thanks for listening to Locked on Mizzou.